Hey folks, Shirley here from Design Files. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about invoices. So I'm gonna show you how to create them, how to send them to your clients, and how to accept online payments. So let's just jump right in and we'll use this project as an example. Uh, let's say that my client has approved a number of items for order and I wanna go ahead and invoice them for these products. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the top of my project and I'm gonna click into invoices in my project navigation. Now that's gonna take me to the invoice overview page. Here I'm going to see any other invoices that I've created for this client. I can also see the status of these invoices. I can create a new invoice at any time by clicking this button up here. And before we jump into that, I just wanted to say that if you do like to collect retainers up front from your clients and then use those towards your invoices, you do have the ability to do that within design files. Now I'm not gonna to touch on this particular feature for this video, but if that's something that you're interested in, just pop into the learn section, go into videos and webinars, and you will find a detailed video tutorial that you will walk you through it step by step. Okay, let's go ahead. We're gonna create a brand new invoice from scratch. All right, so when I click on that, it's gonna bring me into the invoice template view. And here I can start adding in all my details. You can see that my client's name has already been pulled in. And if you don't see your client's name already pulled in, it's okay. Just click into this field, select them from this drop down list. And if you haven't added them yet, you can go ahead and add them here. You've got your invoice ID. You can add a description if you like. You've got your issue date, terms for payment, and the contact details for your client. Below that, you can see that you can add products, you can add manual line items, and you can add your tracked hours. But before we add anything to this invoice, what I'd like to do is just bring your attention to the configure button up here. Now, when I click on that, it's gonna open up this panel. And this is where I can decide what product information I want to show on the invoice. So if you want, you can just turn the toggles on for any of the details that you would like to include, turn the toggles off for anything that you would like to ex exclude from the invoice. And down here, you also have the ability to choose whether you want to show the cost of all the individual line items, or if you prefer, you can turn this off and your invoice will just show one total cost. So it's completely up to you. I'm gonna leave this on for now. You also have the option to set this as a default. So if you like these selections and you want that to show for all future invoices, turn this toggle on, and then all future invoices will pull in those details. But I'm just gonna go ahead and save changes for now. Okay, so let's start adding in products. We're gonna click the button down here to add products, and that's gonna open up this panel. This panel is gonna show me all the items that I've used within this project, and I could narrow that down in a few ways. I could narrow it down by design board, uh, by vendor, by category, by price, by keyword, but one of my favorite filters is this one right here. So. If you've been using, or if you've been, been inviting your client into the design file system and you're letting them approve and decline items on the product list level, it means that you can now narrow down to all the approved products. So that's gonna give you a curated list of everything your client already gave you the thumbs up on. And then you literally just have to click this checkbox here to automatically add all these items to your invoice. Now, before I do that, I did just wanna mention that if you had items that were not necessarily saved to the project, maybe you just saved them to your main library, but you wanna use them or pull them into this invoice, you can switch over to your main library here and then pull pro uh, products directly from that. But let's go ahead, we're gonna add these six. Okay, so now that these items have been pulled in, you can see that all the product information's been pulled in with it, including your unit price, the quantity, the markup, and the client-facing price. And just so you know, the client-facing price is the only price your client ever gets to see. Beyond that, we have our column for taxes, shipping costs, and totals. Now, a couple key things that you'll wanna be aware of whenever you're adding products to your invoices. So let's say that you want to show your client that they're gonna get a discount by shopping through you versus going straight to retail. So if you're ever kind of dealing with retail products and you just wanna encourage your client to shop through you, when I, we'll use this sectional as an example. If I scroll over here to the uh, client price field, directly below that, you're gonna see this link to show a discount. So when I click on that, it's gonna open up this column where you can include the MSRP price. So if you wanna show the retail price of the product, let's say that the retail price of the product is $8,300, okay? 
When you put in the retail price, the system is going to calculate the percentage off retail that the client is going to get by shopping through you. And that will show on your invoice. Now, another key thing that you might deal with is that if you're dealing with a lot of um, custom pieces that have multiple product components and you want to be able to group all those product components together so it just shows one total cost, there is the ability to do that within design files as well. Now, I'm not going to touch on it within this video, but just so you know, I've already created a detailed video for handling custom products for quotes and invoices. So again, pop into the learn section, go into videos and webinars, and you can check that out if you're dealing with a lot of custom items. Now let's go down here and we're going to add in some manual line items now. So we'll click this button here and let's say we want to include our design fees. When you're adding in any services, you want to make sure that you switch this from product to service. This is particularly important if you're planning on syncing your invoices over to QuickBooks and you want to make sure that your income, your service income is going to the correct area. So just be aware of that. Over here, you can put in the total cost for your services, or if you want, you could put in your hourly rate, the number of hours that you spent on the project, and everything will tally up for you over here. And of course, you can always uncheck the tax box here for any of the services that you are adding if you don't need to apply tax to the service. Now you do also have the ability to delete any of the line items that you've added. So if you added something and you don't want to keep it, just click the trash can icon here. And other than the manual line items and the products, you also have the ability to add tracked hours. Now, if you want to add tracked hours, it means using the design files time tracker. Again, there is a detailed video tutorial within the learn section here, and it will show you how to track all your hours for your product or for your projects, and then how to pull those hours into your invoices. So if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to check it out. Okay, let's make our way down here. We've added a few items to our invoice here. So this is where you're gonna select your sales tax. If you haven't added any in yet, you can always add it, and then you can just select it from the list. Now, if you do live in an area where you need to tax shipping costs, let's say that you included a number of shipping costs here within this column, and you need to make sure that you're taxing that. Just turn this toggle on. If that doesn't apply to you and you don't need to tax the shipping costs, leave this off. And if you like the idea of having your shipping costs tied to individual line items, you can turn this toggle on. And again, if that doesn't matter to you, you can leave this off. And it just means that all the shipping costs that you've added here will just get lumped together as one lump sum at the bottom of your invoice. Okay, down here, you do have the ability to add in any additional notes or text to your, in, uh, to your invoices. So if you've got standard copy that you like to include, you can actually just type it in here once, save it as a preset, and then you can load that preset in for future invoices. So it just saves you from having to do it each and every time. You can also add additional documents here. So if you wanna send some additional documents along with the invoice, do that here. And then the next step is deciding how you'd like to get paid for this invoice. If you like the idea of being able to accept online payments from your client, you can turn these toggles on. So we use Stripe as the payment processor, and that means that you can accept credit card or ACH bank transfer payments. The processing free, uh, free, the, the processing fee for credit cards is 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. And the processing fee for bank transfers is 1.1% plus 30 cents per transaction. And if you want, you can choose to push the processing fee onto your client so that they'll cover it when they pay for the invoice. And that way you're not absorbing that cost yourself. Now you do also have the ability to request a deposit. So if you'd like to just let your client pay 50% of this upfront and 50% later, turn this toggle on. You can see over here that you can do a percentage or a dollar amount, and then you just put in what you want and the system will calculate that deposit amount for you. You do also have the ability to enable discounts. So if you've got a friends and family discount that you want to apply to this invoice, turn this toggle on and you'll see that that's going to show up here. Again, you can do a percentage or a dollar amount, put in the rate that you want to add. Everything will tally up for you over here. Now I am going to just turn this off for now, just because, um, I just want to show you what this is going to look like if your client is going to be doing credit card or bank transfer payments and we're going to be pushing that processing fee onto the client so we can leave these on 
Now, if you were going to use the retainer feature within design files, instead of turning all these toggles on, what you would do is you would actually use this option here to record a payment where you're going to pull in the retainer that you're gonna use. So we're just going, it'll open up this panel, I'll select retainer, and then I can choose the product retainer that I'm gonna to use to apply towards this invoice and record the payment that way. So that's how you would do it if you're doing re uh, retainers, but if you are choosing to allow the client to come in and pay the invoice directly, you can use these options. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're gonna save this as a draft and preview it so you can see exactly what your client will see before we send this out to the client. Okay, so this is what your invoice is going to look like. Um, it, will be, it will be branded to your business. So your logo will show here, not the design files logo. You've got your invoice details, contact details, and the breakdown for all of your items. And see how the individual costs are showing here on your invoice? If you don't want those to show, you can choose to remove those and then just show the grand total at the bottom. And then when your client comes in, they'll just see the larger amount and they can choose to click the button here to pay the, this deposit online or the full amount, depending on how you've set this up. They're going to click that button. They can choose credit card or ACH, fill out the details, and they'll click this button right here to pay for the deposit. Now, if you're happy with the way your invoice looks, you can actually choose to exit out of the preview mode here. We're gonna come back to the bottom of this invoice. We're gonna send this invoice out to the client. Your client will already show here, but if you wanna add additional recipients, you can add them. You can add in your own subject line. You can add in your own uh, message. You can even send yourself a copy, and then you can send this invoice directly out to your client. And when you do that, the system is basically going to send an email out to your client. It'll be branded to your business and it'll just have a message that says the invoice is ready to review and a link to click through and see it. And then when they do that, they'll be brought straight into your invoice where they can review everything, click the button to pay. And then when they do that, this invoice will now show as paid within your account. And you'll also be notified that your client has made the payment. Now, if you have a client that would prefer to just give you a check, that's totally fine too. So once you've sent the invoice out to your client, I'm just gonna save this as a draft first. Let's say that you sent the invoice out to your client, and we're looking at this one right here, and they gave you a check instead. And now you wanna record that you collected that payment. So what you can do is you can go into this button right here with the three dots, and you can manually record a payment. You would just select how your client paid you, what method they used, put in the amount, add in the date that they paid you on and record the payment. And that way, whether you're collecting payments inside or outside of the system, everything will be tracked and recorded through your financials page. Alrighty, so I think that about covers it. If you do have any questions about using the invoice feature within design files, then please feel free to reach out to us on the live chat. We are always happy to help. And other than that, I'm just gonna say thanks so much for watching.